This is the sixth video in a series where I'll share what the eight Jungian function in their two Nardian flavors look like, adding specifically how they might show up in dating, mating and relating. If you're watching the series, you will notice a lot of repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information. So feel free to use the chapter markers from the description, but also spaced repetition, what we're doing here is helpful in learning and remembering concepts. My main references for this video are Carl Gustav Jung and Dr. Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published the theory of psychological types in 1921 and Dario is a university professor, prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological types in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments he's completed with lots of participants at this point. Hundreds, I believe, if not more. And in case we haven't met, my name is Doris Fulgrabe. I'm a certified coach with a master's in applied psychology and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. A few caveats before we begin, just to manage expectations. And again, in case this is the only video you watch. Number one, these videos describe the functions in their purest state, but functions rarely show up in their purest state because they interact with other functions all the time. And your brain is also actually busy doing multiple other things at any given moment, like regulating your heartbeat or your respiration. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of this function for 100% of the time. And that's okay. Number two, these videos describe the function for this function type. You may not be this particular function type, which means this function may not be at the very top or dominant in your consciousness. That's okay too, because it's still in your system, you still have access to it, and paying attention to this function may help you recognize when it pops up out of your subconscious, so you can practice integrating it consciously. This will give you a little more control over it perhaps, and then you can reap the benefits. With that, let's move from the broad to the specific, starting with the function, intuition, as Jung called it, or intuiting, which is also used to describe it as a process, and then the function attitude, extroverted intuiting, and then the flavor today is going to be holistic, extroverted intuiting, and finally how it shows up in dating, mating, and relating. Ready? Okay. The intuiting function is one of two irrational perceiving functions. Irrational because it's just about experiencing and perceiving because that's literally what it's doing. The intuiting function helps us appreciate underlying patterns and grasp the bigger picture, which means things that go beyond the immediate senses. It gives us vivid imaginations and a curiosity about the as yet unknown. It is creative and enthusiastic, novel and original, but also ingenious and geared towards freedom. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it in the following way. Intuiting is a process of becoming aware of abstract information like symbols, conceptual patterns and meanings. It is an intangible knowing of what something means, how it relates to something else or what might happen. As an active perceptual process, it is more than a sixth sense. It often involves actively bringing together or forming ideas in novel ways. Sometimes this process is triggered by an external event, or sometimes this abstract information just seems to present itself to our awareness. Moving on to the function attitude, extroverted intuiting, which is the dominant function for ENFP and ENTP types. And what follows are some of Jung's descriptions and his language from 100 years ago is a little different from how we speak today. He's quite male centric, so he uses he him when describing all functions that aren't feeling types. He also uses the word object to describe anything and anyone outside of you and subject to refer to you yourself, the person. Jung says, the intuitive is never to be found in the world of accepted reality values, but he has a keen nose for anything new and in the making. Because he is always seeking out new possibilities, stable conditions suffocate him. In other words, the opposite of concrete reality sensation or sensing types. Jung also says that extroverted intuiting types seize opportunities with extraordinary enthusiasm, only to abandon them as soon as they become known and no longer have potential for, for exploration or new insights. The paradox is the intuitive type thinks they have found their one thing every time until the next shiny thing or person appears. In Jung's words, Neither reason nor feeling can restrain him or frighten him away from a new possibility, even though it goes against all the previous convictions. Jung continues that intuitive morality consists in a loyalty to his vision 
and that this type is often perceived as an unscrupulous adventurer. While men pursue their interests in business, Jung suggests that in women, the intuitive capacity shows itself in the social sphere, making connections and finding men with prospects. He says it goes without saying that such a type is uncommonly important both economically and culturally. For example, when used for good causes, extroverted intuiting is the initiator or promoter of new enterprises, the natural champion of all minorities, and his capacity to inspire courage or to kindle enthusiasm for anything new is unrivaled. If the intuition truly fuses with the ego, he brings his vision to life, presents it convincingly and embodies it. But to do that, this type has to stay still long enough to let one vision come to fruition and not quit the newly planted field while others gather the harvest. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now we're moving into the flavor. Dr. Nardi analyzed EEG data from his participants and found two distinct brain wirings. The one we're looking at here is the holistic style or yin which is focused on getting input and going with the flow. It is more open-ended and looks like patience and relaxation. That's not to say it's flaky. It considers all aspects at once, which allows it to connect ideas in fresh and new ways. Its approach is bottom up, open to discovery and synergy wherever the data might lead. And people of the style like to find new tools and solutions, and they tend to be so aware of their biases that they might lack the confidence to make a change. The style is often more auditory. It pays attention to how things are said, but also ethics, intentions and emotions. Thinking is often figurative and might focus on identity and values, and they often describe using metaphors. In business, the style is more comfortable with an egalitarian and collaborative approach, and likely careers for those with a holistic style include creative arts, social services, humanistic pursuits, soft sciences, and multiculturalism. Dario called the holistic extroverted intuiting type the catalyst. This is not to be confused with the NF, essential motivator style by Dr. Linda Behrens. Dario's holistic extroverted intuiting catalysts notice subtle patterns. He describes it as they are asking themselves, what is the world showing to me and what magic can I draw from it? They negotiate towards a novel win-win outcome with a relaxed, subtle style. They use humor and disguises, and sometimes their gentle influence can feel like magic. They include and promote others and have a great sensibility for bringing out the best in you. They also search for the highest quality potential possibilities for everyone's gain. So unlike the analytic extroverted intuiting spaghetti wall technique, the holistic catalyst motto would be quality over quantity. Dario also points out that this type might get confused between ENTP and ENFP a lot because you can be a holistic NTP and not all analytic flavors necessarily go with a thinking preference, nor all are all holistic types paired with feeling preference. So these flavors add nuance to the whole picture. In dating, you're probably attracted to the catalyst's magical je ne sais quoi and the way they make you feel like you're the only person in the room. If they're cheeky, I can imagine they love using a good pickup line, something like you, me, handcuffs, whipped cream, any questions? But they're just as likely to be a little shy at first, too. Watch out for how much projection and fantasy they're putting on you and the potential of the relationship though because they might carry romantic ideas of the perfect one and that's a lot of pressure. You might be this type if with every first date you start picking out monogrammed hand towels. I'm kidding of course but you have to give a new date the chance to bloom into something amazing. Just you know let things unfold at their own pace. Not everyone can match your energy. In mating, people of this type are affectionate in all the ways and probably love a good foreplay, including leaving love notes in random places and snacking on chocolate-covered strawberries. These will be the perfect partners to act out any fantasies you might have. Their love of variety and open-mindedness still makes me think they'd be open to having open relationships, but it's more likely to look like a slow and deliberate polyamory than maybe the more sex-focused, open or swinging the analytic style might be into. Obviously this all depends on maturity levels and age and you know balance the balancing functions as well. I'm just saying that's the vibe I get. In relating as partners they can be so enamored with their own inner visions that they waste time daydreaming about how great things could be. They're also likely to be super supportive and the best cheerleader to have in your corner. 
Be prepared to communicate a lot about yourself, your needs, your dreams and your relationship. And if you're not already emotionally savvy, you can learn a lot from the holistic, extroverted, intuiting type. Remember, this information is meant as an overview of the function and its holistic flavor. It cannot describe all the nuances or individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you have a better idea. If you think you have the holistic flavor of extroverted intuition or a partner of that type, please leave a comment below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for analytic introverted intuiting. Until then, feel free to check out this video next and I'll see you there.